Okay, hi everyone. This is the first tutorial for my section of spatial practices. And this tutorial is here as an absolute beginner's tutorial for Blender and for 3D animation and rendering, lighting and so on. Uh, it also is an introduction to our first exercise, which is based on this sort of online theme of the oddly satisfying video, which there's lots of them uh, kicking around. And I'm using this format uh, as an excuse to teach you the basic interface of Blender, as well as some ideas on how we might come up with creative inspiration, how we might look for color schemes, and how we can combine uh, default shapes within Blender um, with these sort of um, downloaded 3D models, and I've used this insect model here. Now, one thing that's very important for the way that this class is going to work is that when I make a tutorial, the natural thing to do, of course, is to simply copy what I do, to see if you can make what I make, and therefore, you know, see if you can successfully execute the steps and get your file to work. However, when it comes to submitting um, your finished exercise, I'd like you to go through your own creative process and see if you can come up with something new. And that doesn't just mean, you know, changing the colors or changing the camera angle. You know, really push yourself. And so in this video, I will talk a little bit about, um, you know, just doing some basic uh, looking around on the internet, looking for ideas. Um, just so that every time you, you go through a process like this, you might start by copying something and getting, getting it to work, um, but the next step is to try something of your own. That's really where um, your brain will really test itself to see if uh, the ideas in the tutorial have actually become tools that you can use um, uh, to make your own work. Okay, so let's just pause this and I'll switch into Blender, which is the creative software that we're going to be using mainly in this course. And if you have a look around here, you can see that um, I've got this three-dimensional scene set up. If I press the space bar, you'll see all the, um, the two swinging balls start to move and all the things that are rotating start to rotate. Uh, if you look on the left hand side here, this is what the camera is seeing and so that's got the the final um, composition of the video and I can turn on the colors here and you can see that you know that's pretty close to what the video looks like and then on the right hand side I've got this sort of gray area which is a lot quicker to move around it's not slowing down my computer much whereas the, the colored area um, will slow things down a bit but this gray space is sort of the, def the default uncolored unlit um, view that we do most of our 3D modeling and animation in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is show you how to make this scene. Um, the one thing I won't give you is this 3D model of an insect, again because I, I want to encourage you to, um, to start getting things for yourself. But I'll show you where you can find things like this. Okay, so I'll start a new file. I won't save that because I've already saved it. Okay. So when you, when you open a new Blender file, it looks like this. And I will also link to some more advanced um, tutorials for um, how to get started in Blender. Consider this as like a Blender beginner um, light video. Okay, so uh, when we open a new file, we have a bunch of things in by default. We have a light, which is here, a cube, which is here, which is just, you know, a, a shape, and, um, and a camera. And the camera is, if we're making a video, the video will end up being what the camera sees. Okay, now if I want to move around the scene like this, you can see in um, these little overlays I put on here that I'm clicking my middle mouse button. If I want to zoom in and out, I'm rolling the middle mouse button. Uh, if I want to move left to right, I will hold down shift and use the middle mouse button. If I want to select something, I will left click on it and if I want to delete it I can just press X on my keyboard hit delete if I want to undo that control Z uh, I can also can I right click on it and delete it yes okay I can right click on it and delete it or I can do the same thing up here can I yes okay so this is our basic operations 
Now, what did I have in that video? Uh, first of all, I might show you how I came up with the idea for the video, because it's really, it's not an original idea at all. Um, the only thing I did was, I think I went on Pinterest, um, and I looked up, I think I looked up oddly satisfied, satisfying, satisfying videos. So, and I just, I also had a look around on YouTube and I looked at a bunch of these videos and I think I also looked at animations and you know, there's a bunch of them. Um, and you know, if you click on some of them here, you can see all sorts of cool stuff. Usually it's some form of looped animation where we have objects doing the same thing over and over again. And usually these kind of uh, pastel color palettes and there's all sorts of cool stuff online. However, what I was looking for was something that had reasonably simple animations because this is our beginner's tutorial. So I found this one. Um, this actually links to a YouTube tutorial and so all credit to um, uh, CG Geek. I was looking at, at uh, this tutorial here and CG Geek kind of shows he, he does a few things slightly differently, but the process is essentially the same. Um, so that's, that's the animation I went with. And if we go back to the beginning of, of uh, his video, I was just looking to make this movement here. And the reason I chose this one is that, um, you know, it's a reasonably small number of animated steps. Okay, so first of all, let's make that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete my cube, X to delete, and I'm going to add in a sphere or a ball. If I press Shift A, I will get this add menu and I will click sphere, UV sphere. And now I can get close up on my sphere and have a look at it. Now if you have a numerical keypad, as in the keypad that has a separate group of numbers on the right hand side, these numbers are also very convenient for switching our views. So if you look at this little 3D, this is called the 3D gimbal at the top, if you click on any of these, it's going to snap our view to um, different perspectives. Now it's a little hard to see with this um, sphere, so maybe if I, um, um, I'll show you how to do this in a second, but if I change its shape a little bit, we can kind of see that these are different views. Okay, so now I want to just get that back to being round again. So. If I if I press the letter N, I bring up my transform menu and you can see that I changed the scale here. So I'll put that back to one. Okay, good excuse to discuss the transform menu. The transform menu tells us kind of everything that's going on in the life of this sphere. If I press G for grab and I move it, you can see the numbers that are changing are the location, as in where this sphere is in space. I can set all these back to zero. Whoop. I can set all these back to zero and um, that will put it back in the middle. And also I can, you know, alter the scale and stuff like that here. Okay, but so we have our sphere. Now what we want is the, the kind of the rope that this sphere is going to swing from back and forth. So we're going to use a cylinder. So I'll get a cylinder and at the moment you can see the cylinder is obviously too big. So if I press S for scale, I can make it smaller and you can still see it highlighted there. So why don't I make it smaller by, I'll make it really small and you can see the scale numbers going down. And where these numbers go down, maybe I'll, I'll just type them myself. I'll try 0 0.5. Now I was wrong, it should have been 0 0.05. Now I can actually click and drag down and I can put 0 0.05 in all of them. So now if I press G and Z, I'm going to drag it up on the Z axis, so just on the vertical axis. And that's a bit better, but it's still a little bit too thick. So I'm going to make these 0 0.01. Maybe, yeah, okay, that'll do. All right, so now I want to make it longer, which is going to be the Z axis, the vertical axis here. So here I could just put this back to one and that will start making it longer or I could press SZ and that will do the same thing. 
So I'm going to press 1 on my numerical keypad and just look at it from the front and then I'll press G and Z and lift it up and I just want to put it at the top of my sphere, something like that. So now I've got this um, kind of ball and a string. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I will just join them together to make one object. So I will left click on the cylinder, uh, shift left click on the sphere and I can either right click and press join but you can also see that it gives me a suggestion here it says control J as a shortcut so I can just do that as well control J. Now if I press G you can see that it's all one object and I'll just press Control Z to get it back to its position. And you can see now that there's just one object here. Maybe I'll double click on the name here and call it Ball. OK, so there's our ball. Now the next thing I want to do is get it to swing back and forth. So um, if I just, I'll just lift up this little bar down here and I'll tell you what this is in a moment. But what we want to do is, if I rotate it, if I press R for rotate, you can see that it's rotating, but it's rotating around the ball, not around the string. Whereas we actually want the fixed point to be here if it's, if it's going to swing back and forth. So what that's called is that's called changing the pivot point, or that might also be called changing the origin point. And the origin point is usually displayed by this little, if I move it over here, see this um, little orange dot, that tells us where the where Blender thinks the middle of our object is. And typically it will rotate around the middle of the object. So if also if you hover over these and press delete, it just resets them all. Okay, so I want to have the center of the object. I want I want Blender to think the center is up here, because that's where I want my ball to swing around. So if I press tab, tab takes us into what's called edit mode. Bef before, if we've just been um, in what's called object mode, we're dealing with um, this whole object. Um, however, if I press tab and go into edit mode, you can see that I can select all these little points. And these points are called vertexes. And if I click one and then press G, you'll see that I'm just moving that little part of the object. And if I press tab again, you can see that now I've changed the object. Now I'm going to undo that by pressing Control Z. But in edit mode, now I want to grab the face, which a face is this flat part here. So to grab the face, I can press the number 3, which puts me into face selection mode. You can see I've got this face now. Or if I press the numbers 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, you can see that it's toggling between different selection modes up here. This is the selection mode to select a vertex. This is the selection mode to select an edge. And this is the selection mode to select a face. OK, so I've grabbed that face. And now what I'm going to do is a little trick. I'm going to press Shift S. And whoop, I've got to hold it down. And I want to say cursor to selected. And what that's done, there's this magical little thing in Blender called the 3D cursor. And it looks like a crosshair, or like a kind of an, an aim. And what I did is I went Shift S and I said cursor to selected. So because I had this face selected, the 3D cursor snapped to uh, where the, the face was that I selected. With that done, now I click on Object and Set Origin. And I want the origin, which was this little bit here, I want to set the origin to the 3D cursor. And you can see now that that little, um, that little orange dot is where the 3D cursor is. So now if I uh, rotate, if I press R and rotate, oops, press R and rotate, you can see that now we're swinging around that point. We're not swinging around the middle of the ball anymore. And I'll just click right click to undo that. So what I want to do is I want the ball to swing this way. So if we, if I change the rotations here, if I do it that way, that's what I want. That's rotating on the x-axis. I'll put that back to zero. If I do it this way, it's rotating on the y-axis. Put that to zero. And this way, 
we can't really see much, but that's rotating on the z-axis. It's rotating on the vertical axis. So we want the x-axis. So if I, I'm going to go into my front view again. I can do it by clicking here or clicking one on the numerical keypad. And I want, well actually, sorry, I want to um, click three. Sorry, I wanted to rotate on the x-axis, so click three. Um, and if I press rotate now, I want this ball to kind of swing like this. So what I'm going to do is, um, I worked this out before, about minus 65 is kind of good. That's going to be the up, the upswing. And I have to insert a keyframe for this to function. Just a moment. Um, if I press I, the letter I, it's going to insert a keyframe. What a keyframe is, it's, it's, it's recording this change in time. So now if I, let's say, move this thing down here is my timeline. So if, I'm, if I press spacebar, we're now playing through a, an animation in time. We, we'll probably talk about this a bit in class because it can be a little confusing if you haven't done any time-based work before. But essentially here is frame one, and we'll be going up to frame 250. If an animation is um, uh, 25 frames per second, then this would be a, a 10 second animation. Okay, but if I, if I make another change here, if I go to, let's say, frame 50, I can click 50 here, and I make a different rotation, and press I to insert a keyframe, or I can right click and say, don't replace keyframe, I can do that. Now, if I scroll back and forth between those two points, you can see I've recorded two keyframes. Um, but the second one I did a little bit randomly. I just kind of rotated it and then clicked keyframe. But if I go back to this first keyframe here, you can see I put in minus 65. So if I use this button here to jump to the next keyframe, this I'm going to make positive 65. So if I go here, Okay, there's my, there's my swing. Now what I want is I want that to loop. So there's a few different ways we can get that to loop. Uh, first of all, I will put one more keyframe in. Um, now, I remembered calculating these steps a little bit more. I think now I actually want this first keyframe to be at uh, the 60th frame rather than the 50th frame. And I was just putting that in as a demonstration. So I can actually, down here, I can select it, press grab, and just move it to the number 60 here. There we go. OK, so now what I'm going to do is put the next keyframe on frame 120. And I'm going to put this back to minus 65, which was the initial upswing. So now, if this whole animation was just uh, 120 keyframes long, so I can change it here to end it at 120. And if I press play, it should just kind of loop forever. And that's already doing exactly what we wanted to do. It's just swinging back and forth. And this is really the, um, the core of what this exercise is going to do, is just get this first animation to work. OK, but you know, our animation might be a little bit longer than that. I'm just going to put it back to 250. So what I can do is I can make this animation kind of last forever. And if I change the window here to the, what's called the graph editor, the graph editor, I have to click normalize and I'll just click the dot on my numerical keyboard so I can see these curves a little bit better. The graph editor, is showing us these animations, but it's showing us the speed at which they're happening. So you can kind of see these, this is like, looks like a sine wave kind of curve here, and it's showing us um, how, how quickly our animation is happening. Um, what I want to do is I just want this animation to repeat forever. So I'm going to select these three, and now if I press um, what do I want? N here to get up my little um, tool menu. I'm going to get a modifier and put in a cycles. Yeah, okay, that's done it. So see how that curve is just going on forever now? 
super handy. Okay, there we go. So now we've got our first uh, swinging ball and it is swinging forever. Great. So, okay, now we need to make another one. Now we don't need to make the whole thing again, you know, the great thing about working with a computer is that, you know, a computer can copy one thing many times. So if I press Shift D and then just, if I move my mouse around and then I left click and I press play again, you can see that now I've got two of them. They're both swinging at the same um, rhythm because they've got the same keyframes on them. Now, I didn't actually want to move this around so much. It's kind of annoying. So I can, maybe I can reset its transforms this way. Nope. Okay, I can't do it that way because this, okay, it's at 5.79. So I guess I could put 5.79 there. And now they're both one on top of the other. That's why they're flickering around. Um, but what I can also do, I'll just delete that one. When I duplicate, if I press Shift D and then just left click without moving anything, it'll do the same thing. It'll just duplicate uh, the other ball in the uh, in the exact same spot. So, um, but the problem is is that they're both swinging uh, in the same direction, and I want them to swing um, in the other direction. So, uh, just to keep things really simple, there are ways to duplicate these keyframes onto the other axis, but. Um, for the sake of not getting too complicated, what I'm actually going to do, because it's a very simple animation, is I'm just going to um, make those keyframes, sort of change them in the rotation here. So I've got my ball here and my ball, maybe I'll call it ball two. Ball two. Yeah, maybe let's even call this ball one and ball two. Okay, so ball two, you can see it's. I've gone back to the dope sheet here, and the dope sheet just shows our animation, our keyframes as little dots, um, which is kind of convenient. I'll go to the first keyframe, and we can see that it's minus 65 on the x. Actually, we want it to be minus 65 on the y, and zero on the x. And I will just replace that keyframe, and then I'll go to the next one. So um, I can also press the up arrow. And if I'm here, and that will take me between my keyframes, I'll press up and ooh, is that right? Why is that 54? Let's just hold on. Minus 65, 54. Hmm, that should be 65. I made a mistake there, and I obviously didn't correct it. So <laughs> the first ball was swinging a little bit differently. That's why that was wrong. Okay, so I'll just fix up ball number two. It should go from, we're just tra we're just changing our, our rotations from the X to the Y. So I'll go to the next keyframe um, and I'll just make this zero and make this one 65 and press I to insert the keyframe. And then I'll go to the next one and do the same thing. So this will be minus 65 and this will be zero and I'll press I. Okay, so how do we look now? Ah, we've got nothing. For a good reason. If we see, remember what we did with the looping? The, we didn't loop the new keyframes. The old ones are looped, but on the new one it's not looped. So we'll go back to the graph editor, graph editor, and here are our keyframes. One, two, three. If you don't see this menu here, just press the letter N on your keyboard and go to modifiers, this tab here, and cycles. So now if I press space, we've got um, both of these balls kind of swinging at the same time. The obvious problem is that they're bashing right into each other in the middle. If I press space and scrub back down here, you see that they're, um, <laughs> they're right on top of each other. Also not what we want. So I'm gonna go back to the, uh, the dope sheet and on ball two, if you look at our keyframes here, we start at zero, then we go to 60, and then 120. So I want to move these so that um, it's kind of halfway. So I want to start at 30, and then have the next keyframe at 90, and then the final one at 150. So I should be able to go, can I do this, GX30? Yes, okay, that works. So what I did, I'll show you that again, I pressed with my mouse here, I pressed G for grab, X for the X, oh, I just did a typo, I'll do that again. G for grab, X for the X axis, which is horizontal, and then I typed in the number 30 and hit enter. 
So now if I press space, we can see that they are swinging at a different time to one another. So that's great. And now we have to think a little bit about where our animation should end. Because if you look at it, when I get to the end here, it's not a clean loop. The, the last bit here, see that kind of click? We don't want that. We want it to sort of start and finish at the same place so that when we have our video like this, see how when it gets to the end, it's a pretty smooth transition. You can't really see the beginning and the end of the video because the video is what's called a perfect loop. Okay, so what that means we have to do is, maybe I'll just have a look at the graph editor again. So I can use my brain. Okay, so if I shift select these, we can see we have these two curves here. So we want to make sure that we start and finish at the same time, which to my puny brain would have to be if our keyframes go 1, then 60, then 120, we want to be on some multiple of 120. So um, if I make my animation, I can also change the length of the animation uh, in this tab here. I'll, I'll just start introducing new parts of the, um, the editor. In this tab here, if I make it 240, that should give us a perfect loop because it's basically giving us two cycles of this whole animation. So where if you look at here, this looks exactly like it looks here. So if I go to the last frame, if I go to frame 240 and then go to the first frame, they should be exactly the same. I don't quite look at that. Okay, 240 and then Okay, now, how's our loop now? Let's have a look. Actually, I should be able to make it 120. That might be even even quicker to render. Okay, let's make it 120. And I lost my playhead. Where's my playhead gone? Okay, just a sec. Maybe I need to go back to the dope sheet. Where's my playhead gone? What have I clicked? Okay, I have to fix that out a little bit later. But what we should have now is a perfect loop. Yeah, that's not bad. So now when we get to the end, yeah, that's good. Okay, so we're ending up back in the same spot. That's exactly what we want. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, what I should obviously do is save my file. I'm going to go to File, Save, and I'm starting to get things organized. So for our course, I've got Spatial Practices, Blender, and I've started to make these folders. And I'm going to use these all semester. So I've got my project files, and this is the one I made before. So I might just do this. I'll click on it again, and I'm going to click this plus button, which just gives me a number there. So I can actually make versions of the same thing if I want to save some of my changes. And I might make it number two save blender file okay so we're all saved that's good stuff okay so now i want to make that little um that little ring that the the videos are passing through this this ring here we've got the two um balls but i want to make this ring that they're passing through and there's lots of different ways we can do that but just to introduce some new shapes i'll do it kind of a regular conventional way now if I go Shift A and add in a torus, which is a donut shape, it appears up here. And that's because when we add in a new shape, it'll always appear where our 3D cursor is. But I don't want it up here, I actually want it in the middle of the scene. So I can, of course, just put the location here to zero and it's back where I want it. But another thing I can do, I'll just delete that torus, is Shift S and put my uh, 3D cursor to world origin. So that's back at the beginning too. Now, to get to the beginning of your animation, there should be my little playhead here, but I've hidden it somehow, and I can't be bothered to work out what shortcut I've hidden it by, but yeah, I'm sure if I Google it, it'll sort itself out. But to get to the beginning of your animation, you can also just press Shift and left arrow. Okay, so I'm gonna add that torus in again. Shift A, torus. Now, what we want is the torus should be, first of all, rotated. Um, if I press 
r, it'll sort of rotate in all sorts of different directions. But we want to rotate it on the red axis here, on the x-axis. So if I spin it here, that's, that's the direction we want. And we want to rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, we also want to uh, uh, maybe change... Oh, look, I'll just leave it as a default, so I won't worry about any of that. But I want to change its overall size so that it's large enough for the sphere to pass through. So if I press uh, S, you'll see it get bigger. But it's not, it's not the best view to do it. I want to be looking straight down this axis so I have a two-dimensional view. And this just means I don't have the distortion of perspective where it's quite hard to see what you're doing. Click Y here, and I'll just press S, scale it up a little bit. OK, great. So how close are we? You can see that gap there. That's pretty cool. We want it to be kind of close because that's kind of the point of these videos. OK, so now if I press play, we can see that one of the balls is swinging through it. The other one is crashing <laughs> straight through it. But that's okay, what we're going to do is, is we'll get this one to spin. But first, I want to put a little, um, if you look at my video, see I put this little gap here for the strings to pass through? That's like one of those classic tricks in oddly satisfying videos to have all these little um, spatial tricks. So we'll do that as well. So if I want to cut part of this um, torus out, I'm going to look down this axis again. And I'll go back to the beginning of my animation and I'll press tab and I'm going to delete some of these um, some of these faces so if I'm in face select mode here I can select these by just left dragging a box but if you look around it, it didn't select the ones on the back which is kind of annoying so a way to get around that is we change the viewing mode and we can do it up here by just clicking here this is actually changing from wireframe to um, I don't know, default solid mode, um, and we'll discuss these a little bit later, look dev mode and render mode. But I want it on wireframed mode, because now if I drag this in wireframe mode, and I'll go back, I should show you this other trick in a second, and I go back here, it's grabbed everything, because wireframe mode is kind of like an x-ray, it sees through everything. So that's really handy. You can also switch between these modes by just pressing Z and you can kind of click or even faster you can just go Z and swipe the mouse and that's usually what I do because it's kind of faster. But so I've got these faces selected and I'm going to press X and delete faces. And if I press tab now and I'll go back to solid view you can see that the strings are kind of, on this one at least, passing through the gap where it should. Um, but I want to close this gap because now I've got this sort of impossible hollow shape. So this is what's called polygon editing and we'll do a lot more of this when we start to look at 3D modeling. But if I press the number 2 and I shift select these edges, I can shift select all the way around, grab that whole ring and press the letter F and it will fill the hole. Happy days. Now there's of course a quicker way to select the edges. If I press control, control will select a path between these edges. Um, so that's, that's kind of the quick, the quick way to do that. All right, so that looks pretty good. Um, what I'm going to do is if you look at my video here, see how everything in, in mine is a little smoother? There's not this, there's not that harsh edge that we have, that we have here. So to get rid of this harsh edge, there's a lot of ways you could do it. Um, for example, I could press tab and with those edges selected I could do a bevel here and that will do that. Um, and I'll just undo that. Or I could um, use uh, a smoothing modifier probably. No, maybe a subdivision modifier might do it. A subdivision surface. That's done it as well. See it's kind of smoothed things out a little bit there. Um, I might do a little bit of both because I kind of want it super smooth for some reason. So okay, so I've got those edges selected. I've got the bevel tool here in, I mean, edit mode. And what I had done, I'll just go through that again. I had all these edges selected. I'm holding down Control now, and I'm just going to. Am I? Okay, Control, select that loop, 
and I'm going to click on the bevel tool here. I'll just drag it out, um, and it'll actually tell me how much I've beveled it by here. 0 0.04 with a lot of numbers. I just want that a clean 0 0.04 because then I'll do it on the other side. So here I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to select that whole loop of edges, if it'll let me. Yep. Then I'm going to drag that bevel tool and put that also at a clean 0 0.04. Okay, so now we've learnt a bunch of things. We've learnt how to cut some faces off an object, how to bevel it. Um, and now I might, um, I might add that subdivision surface as well. So that's looking kind of nice and smooth. Now the last trick we can do to smooth it is we can have it in what's called smooth shading mode. So if I right click here and I click shade smooth, you can see that it's just, it's looking at the faces in a different way basically. The way that, it, that Blender is calculating how light bounces off these faces has changed and we've got this sort of smooth shape now. And eventually everything in our video will be super smooth because that's just the style of, of this type of animation. Okay, so we've still got a problem. This thing needs to spin. So it needs to kind of do something like this, like spin that way, spin that way, something like that is what we want. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll go to the beginning of my animation here, frame one. Um, I'll insert a keyframe on the rotation by pressing I and then if I'm going to select all of these so I can see when does it need to be rotated 90 degrees hold on huh, right at the right at the beginning actually because this one passes through that way so in fact here it should be R Z 90 so you can see that number's gone to 90 so it should start like that okay so we go through and now it should be rotated uh, 90 degrees when this one is down here which should be at frame 30 approximately um, if I press I'm gonna look, look on the x-axis by pressing the number 3 and I'll just yeah so it'll be it's it's sort of never really hitting the middle because it's in the middle between two frames. So I'll, I'll call it frame 30. And at frame 30, it should be rotated um, uh, 90 degrees again. So let's just... Oh, now hold on, I'm getting a little bit lost with my own brain here. So here, and then this way, it should at frame 30, it should spin... If I go RZ, it should spin that way. So that means it should go to zero, zero, I guess. If I put that at zero at frame 30 and hit I, is that correct? So ball goes through, ball goes through, and then 30 frames later, so let's say at frame 60, looks like we're going, what are our numbers doing? Our numbers have gone from 90 to zero, so I think we're going to go to minus 90 at frame 60. Um, uh, now I'll go here, minus 90. Now, and press I to insert a keyframe. This might all be a little bit confusing, so you might have to watch it a few times, but basically we want to make sure that every time the balls pass through, yep, okay, that's good. That should be enough. Now we can just loop it. Uh, let's go back to um, the graph editor. Now I will select one, two, three, these three keyframes. Press N to bring up the modifiers and cycles. Now there's probably going to be something wrong with it, I think. I think, I think, I think. Yeah, something's not good. Yeah, there's a little bit of a click there. And what I think is wrong, the first thing is, I think I want to have, if I set the a thing called frame interpolation, which I might explain in class, if I set that to linear, is that gonna fix it? 
No, no, it's not. What have I done here? Let's check my graph editor. Sorry, my dope sheet. How are we here? Zero to 90 to minus 90. Hmm, I'm not sure what I've done wrong here. I'm just going to hide these two balls and just check that that click is coming from this object. Yes, it is. So I think it's in how my looping is going. So if I grab these, this keyframe, is it 19? No, it's only 0. Interpolation type linear. Interpolation type linear, interpolation type linear. I'll just get rid of that. Okay. You know what? There might be a quick and easy way to fix this. I might just go to frame, uh, frame ninety, frame ninety, and put. What, where are we at here? We're at minus 90. We've gone from 0 to minus 90. So frame 90 will be minus 180. Hit that keyframe. Is that right? I might have to pause the recording to see if I've stuffed something up here. Minus 60, keyframe 90, minus 80, insert a keyframe, and keyframe 120 should be minus 270. Okay, that looks better. I'm not entirely sure what that error was off the top of my head. Um, so that's probably OK for now. OK, so I didn't use the looping option here. I simply just um, got all those rotations uh, working at the same time. Now, one thing I wanted to say about when I said that I set the interpolation type to linear, you might think, what the hell does that mean? OK, so what that means is that if I right click on this and I set the interpolation type back to Bezier, you see that it's it's got that curved structure that our other animations did, and what that basically means is that, um, say with um, our swinging ball here, the great thing about this animation is that it slows down as it gets to the keyframe exactly like we would want it to physically. That the pendulum, um, if I set this to linear, it'll start looking really weird it kind of looks too robotic, you know, it's like it's bouncing back and forth. So actually, the this curve is what we want. But with this rotation, that's going to look really weird because I, I messed, that, messed around with that. I'll put that back to linear. With this rotation, we want it to be rotating at the same speed the entire time. So um, that's why I've set it this way. And actually, the simplest way to do this, these keyframes actually aren't even necessary because we can see that on our graph, it's just a straight line. So that straight line is um, what's, uh, what's what uh, the rotation is doing. So if I took these keyframes out, actually, they should be completely deletable. If I go X and delete keyframes, the curve is actually exactly the same because um, it's just traveling along that straight line. Anyway, OK, so now if we look at this and I press play, Good. OK. We've got the balls swinging 
through the gap in the circle. That's great. And you know, that's actually the kind of the hardest part of the animation already done. That's the animation part that I'm sure for many of you is completely new. So now to get something like this, what else do I have to do? Well, I've got the two, um, the two balls, one, one swinging through the ring, the ring rotating, the other swinging through the ring. Um, and what I did is I, I put in these two, these two insects. So if you go to a website like um, uh, CG or oh, Turbo Squid's a good one, Turbo Squid, um, you can download all sorts of things for free. So if I put in like um, spaceship or something, put in spaceship, hit enter, enter, okay. I get all these you know, spaceship models. Now, I would say right now, definitely don't don't buy them. Just download something for free. Um, so we want to look at models that are only free. So now all of, all of these are free. And we just want a format that we can work with in Blender. Now, the, the file formats we probably want are OBX um, and FBX is also fine. The, kind of the two most common like exchangeable formats for 3D. So you know if you wanted a spaceship you could download any of these um, and then put them in a convenient folder. In class I'll talk a little bit about you know where you should put your files and so on. You know if you don't want a spaceship you can search whatever you want. Um, and what we're going to do is import you know whatever object you have into the scene. Now I just kind of put them underneath underneath the ring but you can do whatever you like you know this is where I want you to sort of start to think creatively because now we're just talking about you know artistic things like like composition but I'm gonna go with this composition because you know I've already decided on it so I'll just make it now I'm gonna import that insect and so I'm gonna go file import import OBJ because that's the format that I had and I'll navigate to where I had that model stored, which was here, I think. <laughs> I think, that, or maybe it's this one. Um, and I'll click it. And this one's going to be a little bit slow just because this 3D model of an insect has a very high polygon count. And that's because I, I actually downloaded it from a museum where they were like 3D scanning all of their insect collections. I thought it was really cool. Um, but this has got a really high polygon count. So you can see my, my blender is struggling a little bit. So I'm going to just do a step that you probably won't have to do. I'm just going to um, decimate it, which is just kind of remove a lot of its polygon faces. So you can just see it lost a little bit of detail there. And I'll hit apply. And that should make it a lot kind of faster to work with. OK, so. <clears throat> Sorry, just let me have a sip of tea if I'm talking too much. Okay, so now I'm going to um, kind of put it where I've got it here. So I'm going to scale it down. I'll press S and just move my mouse in. And I want it kind of underneath the ring. Now I want to look from this front view here. I'm going to rotate it, grab it, bring it down. I'll look from the top view now and see, maybe I'll I'll have, have it this way. And I'll show you one other trick. If I want to have more than one, I could, you know, I could duplicate it like, like I duplicated the other one. But um, you know, Blender has lots of very clever ways to make copies of things. And now I'm going to use something called an array modifier. I don't know why I said array so dramatically, but okay, so if I add a modifier and actually no, I'll use a mirror modifier. A mirror modifier. Now, that hasn't done a whole lot of mirroring, at least not in the way I wanted it. I wanted it to mirror this way, so eh, none, of that, none of that's doing what I want. So first of all, I'm going to apply its transforms, see if that fixes it. And I'll explain what that is in a second. Um, mirror now. OK, much better. All right, so what I did is when I applied its transforms, if I go back before I did that, see how the location, the rotation, everything's kind of set at something different. Um, and that's because it Blender remembers what, how big this was and where it was when it came into the scene. But if I want to reset all of this, I go Control-A and I apply. I can apply just one of them or I can apply all of them. 
and see it sets the location and rotation to 0 and the scale to 1. And now that means if I put in the mirror modifier and set it on the x-axis, it does kind of what we'd expect it to do, and it mirrors it this way. Okay, cool. So now if I press play, I've kind of got most of it there. What else does my scene have? Okay, it's got this, this ground. You, you know, I kind of cut the bugs in half. So I think what I did is I used a cube. Um, I put in a cube here, and I can just bring it down. And I want to scale it um, on both the y-axis like this and the x-axis like this. So I can put scale on the y, 10, and scale on the x, 10. And the reason I used a cube is just sometimes it's convenient if I want to place the ground here, I can really see where it is. Whereas if it's a plane, I'll show you if I put in a plane, um, and I'll just scale that up. If I look down here, it can kind of be kind of difficult to see. It's, you know, now if I'm not, if I don't have it selected, I can't even see it. It's super annoying. So um, sometimes I use a cube. But, you know, the camera shouldn't see the difference. Okay, so if I look back here, I, I, I guess I had it kind of cutting their legs off a bit, something like that. Um, and now is probably a good time to... Okay, look, I'll, I'll add in that last rotating thing, which was um, these rotating um, polygon things. Okay, so if I go Shift Add, and this time I'll add another UV sphere, I think it was, but I think I turned all of this right down. Where's that sphere gone? There it is. If I turn this down to like five, is that what I want? No, that's not what I want. Okay, different shape. It was an isosphere. I'm just going to put my 3D cursor. To move the 3D cursor, just Shift right click, and it'll go wherever you right click. It's just a handy way to have things enter into the world where you want them. Okay, Shift A, I'll add an icosphere, and I will put its subdivisions down to one. And that's given me that little shape that I was using um, here. Okay, so I'll just put its location to zero, so it's in the middle at the moment. Now if I look from the side here, I'm going to press G for grab, and I just want to move it so it's just hovering above the ground. And all I had it doing was sort of spinning around on the um, on the z-axis like this. So because our animation is 120 frames long, I'll just go to frame 1 and um, and I will... what will I do? <laughs> I will just put that back to 0 um, and I'll put a keyframe in there by going I and then I will go to the last frame by going shift left arrow and I'll put this to 360 and press I and I will right click and set this also to here's a good a good thing actually I can show you you can see what this slowing down does see how it, it it's kind of like a car slowing down and speeding up it's not rotating constantly but if I set these to interpolate linear and interpolate linear now I've got that straight line again it should just kind of rotate forever Yeah, cool. All right, so all right, so that's kind of my scene. Now, the last part of things is making it kind of look cool, you know, getting it getting it to look interesting. And this is the last part of of this tutorial. So, uh, first of all, we need to see what the camera sees. So, from the beginning, we had this camera that was just kind of hanging out here. Um, if I delete it. I can just add a new one by pressing Shift A and add a camera and it'll kind of appear wherever my 3D cursor is. If I go into these tabs up here, it's got all of these different views for doing all sorts of different things. And um, I want to go into the animation view just because it's kind of nicely set up for this. Um, oh, <laughs> I've got my little toolbar back again. How convenient. Now I can go to the beginning. All right. Um, but I want to look through the camera. So I'll do it on the left-hand side. To look through this camera, I can either um, go uh, click on these three lines. V uh, what is it? View cameras, select active object as camera. It'll do that. Or 
if I press middle mouse here, it'll probably snap off it. I can also just press with the camera selected control numpad zero and it will do the same thing. All right, and we can see the camera is not at all <laughs> looking at, at the objects. It's kind of looking over here somewhere. So there's a few ways we can get in the correct position. If I press N here, you know, I could uh, look at the rotation and kind of spin it that way. But a quick and easy way is if you press N here and you go to view, you can lock the camera to the view. And that means if I scroll and stuff, you'll see that it's also moving the camera and rotating the camera. So we can just, you know, position it as if it was the 3D viewport. So I could do something like this. And if I press spacebar, it's getting pretty close to, um, to um, you know, what I ended up with here. A few more things to do. Um, for a start, I made this square just because so many of the things I, were looking at, I was looking at online were kind of square. Um, I think that's also partly because people are making these for, I guess, platforms like Instagram, where videos are often square. So I thought, you know, why the, why the hell not? Let's make it square. So to make it square, um, I will go to my settings up here of my, um, no, I'll go to my output properties. And you can see the resolution here. And this is a great thing about working with 3D that, you know, we can make the resolution anything we want. We can make huge images. We can make, you know, HD or 4K or 8K or yeah, anything, as long as, you know, you're willing to wait a long time for your computer to render it. But I just want to make it square. So I'll leave this at 1080 and I'll just put this at 1080 pixels as well. And you can see that it's changed the camera's um, view to, to the square look. Um, so that's cool. It's kind of getting close to what we want. Um, I did another kind of weird trick. I think I used a, an, a, a, what's it called? Orthographic camera here. So the camera viewport has this like weird geometrical look where these things are kind of in a square shape. Um, you know, there's no perspective. We're going to talk about this a lot in class, but you know, this is just to show you some more tricks in this first tutorial. So I'm going to set my camera to um, orthographic. So it's on perspective now. I set it to orthographic, and now if I zoom it, it doesn't zoom anymore. And that's because orthographic cameras don't really have perspective, they have scale. So I just adjust this scale thing here. Um, but aiming an orthographic camera is actually kind of difficult. So I'm just going to do it a little bit um, by the numbers here. <laughs> by the wrong numbers, it would seem. Minus 45, OK. I kind of want it, yeah, I want it to face, um, what did I have it doing in the original one? Maybe I had it like um, kind of almost straight on. And then if I look down and I grab this and go across, Maybe I had it like directly in front. See how that looks kind of, it's kind of this cool, weird, abstract thing. The orthographic camera, it's nice for these sort of geometrical works. It's just got a, a kind of a weird feel to it. So actually what I've done is I've made its rotation completely straight on with my scene. But I want to make it point down a little bit. So if I look down the x-axis, I'll rotate it on the x just a little bit. Something like, something like that. I think that's kind of what I had and I might just change its scale a little bit more. So, yeah, that looks kind of cool. Like, see how the ball is like rotating straight at the camera? It's got that strange geometrical feel. Um, now, I also need to reposition this guy. If I just grab him and I think I need to make it a little smaller, so I'll change the scale here to 0.5 and um, what did I do? Something, I think I had like two here. What is it? Two here and two in the background. So um, I'm just going to do a very quick kind of duplicate. So I'll go Shift D, left click, grab, G for grab, X, the X axis, and kind of drag it across. I'm just doing it sort of by eye. I'm not doing it very exactly. And now I'll left click here, Shift, left click here and shift D again, left click, and I'll, this time I'll G for grab Y on the Y axis, and I'll move them back until they're in a nice, nice sort of spot. Maybe something, I'll kind of put them up here. 
Um, and obviously my ground is not big enough, so if I scale it, S, and then scale it on the Y axis, I just kind of want to do that so I don't have to have a horizon and a background. But okay, so now, you know, I'm, I'll just press Control Save to save what I'm up to. We're really close. Um, everything's there except it, you know, <laughs> it looks really boring. And even if I go into rendered view, it looks kind of terrible. Um, it doesn't have any good lights. Um, you know, nothing's, nothing's looking interesting at all. Um, what I'm going to do, I'll actually just uh, stop this tutorial here because this is, I know this is quite a lot. Um, and then I will start one more video where I'll show you how to um, go from this kind of grey, boring looking thing to, um, to this where it you know, looks nice and the objects look like they're physical objects and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I'll stop this recording and then I'll start another one.